Shalom, chaverim, this is Rabbi Itzhak Shapira coming to you live in this special series we're doing every day called Countdown to Share It. Countdown to Share It is the series that we're doing right now. I hope you've been blessed yesterday with the Shi'ur. Yesterday we spoke from Isaiah chapter 14 and we continue our series Countdown to Share It today with a special guest as you notice the the graphics is is not perfect because we had to beam him all the way from israel and guess what baruch hashem for technology when it's working in a minute i'm going to talk about him you're going to speak to him you're going to hear him and we might even take a few questions from him but if you're watching me now I want to say something. You see flashing on your screen this link, https avatami.org, live stream registration. For the next few days, we are offering this promotion. This promotion is the entire conference and the two days yeshiva, five full days for $100. Why do we do it? We do it because it is going to be prophetic in nature. The teaching that you're going to get in this Congress, in English or in Spanish, you, you, you will be able to do both, is going to be prophetic. So if you are interested, go to this link, register, and we will send you uh, instructions uh, exactly how to make uh, uh, the, this gift offering to help our global global outreach fund so that you will be able to get ready with the sherit of the house of israel with that being said i would like to beam you all the way to israel to the galilee now with a very special guest we invite with us right now to the broadcast eldad kenan eldad book how are you well, I'm fine, Yalili. It's great to have you with us. What is the good news? Tell me, is there anything good coming out of the Galilee? Well, I know that there is at least one good thing that comes from the Galilee. And I would like what to is that? Second. I know there's more than one thing, but what is a good thing? Tell me one good thing out of the Galilee today. Well, it's not a good thing. It, it, it's a good Sayak, Jesus. Wow. Yeshua. <laughs> wow, that is amazing to hear you saying that. And that people need to know, first of all, those who watch you, been watching you, thousands and thousands of people been watching you. And we're starting this watch party right now. Uh, t t tell us a little bit who you are. Who are you? Who are you? Well... I'm, uh, I was born, I'm Eldad Kenan, I was born in the Galilee. Like everybody else, I went to the IDF. I got off the IDF. Uh, started You're very modest. Stop, stop. You're very modest. Can you tell people ah. what were you doing in the IDF? I, I, what I was doing? Well, I was in infantry special unit. You, you were in a, what's called a Sayer Chaket, correct? Yes, correct. It is like a very top, top, uh, top unit. And uh, uh, you've been in several wars. Is that correct? Yeah, in two. Okay, continue, continue. Tell us about, about who you are. Uh, well, as you can see, I've survived two wars, but many others did. I'm not so special, but I guess my study is very, very special. So... Talk to us a little bit about your study and your fascination with, with what your expertise is. You are really an expert in this field of uh, first, uh, second well, century, third century uh, uh, Messianic Judaism and, and so forth. How, how did you even become interested in this? Well, because uh, I was expertizing in, in Galilean tombs, and there were some tombs that I, that I couldn't explain to myself. Who were the owners? Who were buried in them? And by, by when time, you know, along the time, 
uh, the, the possibility that we are, uh, the owners were uh, Christian Jews, Messianic Jews, uh, this possibility rose up. And uh, for uh, the last seven or eight years, with this idea in mind, I was able to, and I am able, to point at uh, a few uh, Christian Jewish tombs in the Galilee, I mean Messianic tombs, and uh, more uh, finds uh, in the Golden uh, Heights. were uh, Christian Jews, Messianic Jews. And more finds in the in the Golan Heights. So, Eldad, you spent how many years now in investing and in investigating Messianic Judaism and the connection between early Jew Jewish believers to, to Judaism? How, how long did you spend on this? Well, a few years. Six or seven years. And you went to Haifa University. And yeah. you study, study there, correct? And, uh, well, in five years in uh, Haifa University, the term uh, Christian Jews, which means Messianic Jews, I heard it only once in five years. And what I, what I learned is that nobody is uh, talking about this term and these people. Is it like the big I mean, white elephant in the room? The field of study. Pardon me? It's like a big white elephant in the room. Is it that nobody talks or nobody knows? There is a difference. Well, you no, know, it's a blind spot, deliberately a blind spot. Why so? Why do you feel it's a blind spot? Well, I don't like, I don't like to, to speak in the name of others. Uh, let's leave the others because I'm not their spokesman. I can speak for myself. When there, okay. when, there is, when there is a blind spot, I'm there to see why it's so blind. What is your hypothesis? Why? I mean, if you were to hypothesize why it's such a blind spot, what would you say? Why? Well, I told you, I, I don't want to speak for others. But if I would, I would think that uh, scholars from all sides, don't like to study this uh, topic. But for the last years, yes, more and more scholars are touching this, the topic of Messia ancient Messianic Jews. If you are to talk now for Eldad Kainan, yeah, give me a picture of what an ancient, ancient Messianic Jew look like, feel like. What? Smell like what? like any other any other Jew of the time. Okay, this is very important. When you say like any other Jew, but they could not be like any other Jew. They believe in Yeshua. So what? They didn't walk with the name Yeshua, Yeshua on the forehead. Okay. They were just El Daz. I will do. El Dad, we are uh, the connection a little bit choppy. Can you repeat yourself? Well, I'm going to show the evidence that these Jews were just like any other Jew in Israel, in, in the Galilee, in the Golan Heights, and other places. And I will show the evidence, no doubt. I, I, I will not do. I will not show the evidence now in this uh, media. Okay. I understand. You you have a three-hour special that is going to be a worldwide premiere to the world. I, I have seen it from my discussion with you. It's absolutely shocking. You teach a course called How Deep Are Your Roots? Talk to me a little bit about this. Eldad? Connection in Israel is not so good. Eldad, can you hear me? Now I can hear and see you quite well. Okay. I, I asked a question. You're putting yeah. a presentation. You have a three-hour special in Bogota called How Deep Are Your Roots? What do you mean by that? What are you going to be discussing? 
Well, when we say that the ancient Messianic Jews were just like any other Jew, it means that if you look at the roots of any other Jew, you are looking at the roots of Messianic Jews. So and the roots, okay, go ahead. Field, and in the field and in written evidence. So when you're saying written evidence, are you telling me that there is, there are many references to messianic Jews in our writings? When we talk about the uh, rabbinic writing, yes, we have a lot of, a lot of evidence. I would say enough evidence to to create a picture, a complete picture. And when we look at the church fathers. Uh, writings we have more evidence eldati lehti pa akhora titkadem ti pa akhora ta zeo matsmian kha so so when you're talking about the evidence especially from from jewish sources are you talking about like yetalmud yerushalmi what kind of sources are we are we talking about we're talking about the mishnah the tosefta and talmud yerushalmi and midrashim and and if you were to categorize obviously it will be fascinating if i understand your lecture you're going to take us through this evidence also from jewish sources right you're going right. to i start with the church fathers uh, writings and then i move to rabbinic sources and they are very clear so so if you are very clear just, just on a very high level without getting to the details, because obviously those things have to be studied. But if you were to categorize, let's talk first about the church fathers. Yeah. If you were to categorize the way the church fathers would have viewed Messianic Jews, how would you say? Negative, very negative, anti-Semitic, how would you put it? Negative is under, understatement. They were understatement? All, yes. They were all anti-Semites. Anti but they really hated the uh, Messianic Jews. Amazing, amazing. So really when we talk about anti-Semitism, everybody needs to understand it. It is rooted in the church fathers. Uh, I don't think this is the topic right now. I will say, I will <laughs> say for me that anti-Semitism, I will make the statement that anti-Semitism is rooted already in the church fathers. Flip the coin for me. Pardon me? Flip the coin for me for a minute, minute. Let's switch the coin and let's talk about Jewish sources. How yeah. negative? How negative are well, they? Well, I can say this. The rabbis were very, very negative toward uh, Messianic Jews, but the lay Jews were completely not. So... It's one of those things that you're telling me right now that for the common person in the street, let's say I'm a Messianic Jew and, and you are not a Messianic Jew, we wouldn't be able to tell them apart. That's basically what you're oh, saying. They share the same synagogues. They share the same cities, towns, villages, the street, the market. I will show the evidence. Eldad, as, as Jewish halacha developed, is it, I'm going to ask a controversial statement, is yeah. it safe to assume that Messianic Jews adhere to Halakha completely, partially, or completely rejected it? How, where would you put it? Almost completely. You would say they're almost completely yeah. adhere? They, they, yeah. they follow Halakha? Yes. Amazing. You know, by... By itself, this is this is shocking statement, and you say that you have the evidence to prove that. Well, if these in Messianic Jews went to the synagogues, ancient synagogues, and attended them with other Jews, and uh, there is a possibility that a Messianic Jew becomes a chazan in a synagogue, well, they must. Maybe you can explain to our audience what a chazan and and why that would be significant. The cantor. The man who sings the prayers for all of the attendants. So you're telling me that there is evidence that suggests that Messianic Jews were cantors? No, they could be can yes, they could be cantors. 
they were not, let's put it this way, they were not disqualified. They were not disqualified because of their messianic faith. That's what you're telling us. Well, the rabbis didn't like the possibility. They talk about the possibility that a messianic Jew become... But, become a, but, but a Eldad, Eldad, if you even talk about this possibility, it means yeah. that there is, there is some reality to this. They are part of the society. Yes, of the community. Of course. Oh, wow, wow. I hope Peter Gordon watching us. He's a messianic cousin. He's going to be with us. I'm sure he will be very excited to okay. hear. Look, look, so what you are going to bring, you, you have a lecture called How Deep Are Your Roots? It's going to be three hours special. Friends, we are giving it to you. Basically $100 for everything. This lecture alone that they'll that put worth more than a hundred dollars. I know that it's groundbreaking and revolutionary. Register today. When we're talking about the depth of the roots of Messianic Judaism, yeah. when you look at this, and you 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 are a researcher, you are you are a scholar, you look at that from a, a imperative uh, perspective. Yeah. I'm citing the uh, the uh, sources. It's not my own ideas. And, 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 and I want to ask you this, not to put you on the on the spot. You are not messianic. You are you are just no, not, you are I'm just, just I'm just a Jew like you. Don't forget it. <laughs> I I don't I don't. But I'm saying you are approaching it without any agenda and without any biasness here. No no no. I'm not serving any agenda. I'm not trying to promote your uh, belief because I know your belief is strong enough. But it, belief is not my business. The facts and the sources are my business. Yeah, that's, that's, that's amazing. Just, just those of you who are going to catch live on Thursday, May 30th from, nine in the, from 10 till 1 in the morning. Eldad Kane, I'm give, going to give a three hours shiur. And believe me when I say it, he can teach for three days. That's the introduction of the introduction of what we're going to be getting. Of written and physical evidence. Yeah, that, that is absolutely uh, uh, incredible. If uh, there is uh, one message that you would like to convey to everybody who will be watching your live, your live presentation, what, what would be the message? What is the message? The message very, is... Very high level. Well, that the Messianic Judaism is as old as... Uh, well, it, it, it began with Jesus and it lived for at least 600 years. And then uh, you guys are just renewing historical facts and way of life. So you know a little bit about Messianic... Let, let me ask you a tough question. Okay. You know a little bit now about Messianic Judaism modern. You, you being, you've been talking to Messianic yeah. Jews. Do you think Messianic Judaism today, here we are 21st century, is yeah. more Jewish... Or less Jewish than, let's say... I don't understand even the difference between more Jewish and less Jewish. There is Jewish. You cannot be partially Jewish. <laughs> so, so, so you the question of Jewishness me, was never... Okay. By the way, Rabbi, what you heard from me now, it's the first time you heard it from me. There is no less Jewish or more. So the Jewishness, you, you know, today, the reason I'm asking the lesson more, because obviously today we're in the 21st century, and if you say I'm a Messianic Jewish, they will tell you you're no longer Jew. But you think that in the first and second century, the Jewishness question of followers which was never, never even a question. It wasn't even a you, question. You know, a woman cannot be partially pregnant. Or she is pregnant or she is not. And this is just the same with Jew being Jewish. You cannot be 90% Jewish. Or you're Jewish or you're not. 
and that, but when you look at that as your Ashkafa, when the evidence presents itself and the synagogues and the burial tombs and all of those things that you're going to teach us, you, you're basically the Jewishness of this follower of Yeshua never even came to question, never even questioned. Nobody questioned their Jewishness. No, the rabbis tried to, to keep the Messianic Jews away from the community, but they never said they are not Jews. Very, very interesting. And they tried and tried and tried and keep, kept trying because the community wanted the Messianic Jews to be part of it. Do you believe personally on a personal level that the Birkata Minim that was put into the Shmona Isre yeah. was put there deliberately for the Messianic Jewish believers or... Because I heard, I heard both ways. I heard it was not just for the Messianics. What is your thoughts about this? Well, we, we can say that before the destruction, I mean, uh, year 70 CE, there were a few uh, sects in Judaism. Each of these could be uh, termed mean, minim. I mean, right. the Paris, Pharisees could term the Sadducees minim. But, uh, for example... But after the destruction, the only Jewish group that was uh, termed Minim were Messianic Jews. Okay, okay. So, so Eldad, if you take us to first century, right? We have the Prushim and we have the Tzdukim and we have the Essenes. We have all of those groups kind of coexisting. Try to paint a picture for us. How would be, is the Messianic Judaism really just like another group? Or how influential do you anticipate this group being in the first century there? I, I Honestly, I don't know. But I do know that the majority of the uh, Messianic Judaism, the, the, the group, the sect, okay, were Pharisees. Without the there's there's not a, not a doubt that even Yeshua identified himself with for a sake Judaism. A, a proshi, of course. There's no yes. doubt about that. Now no. you live in you live in the Galilee. Tell us a little bit where you live. What part of the Galilee you you reside? I'm at. In central Galilee, about thirty five minutes from Nazareth, forty minutes from the Capernaum. And 40 minutes, as you know, from the great treasures of Messianic Judaism in Upper Galilee. So that, that's where I kind of wanted to ask you. Obviously, the evidence is overwhelming. Or I should say there's great evidence. I have had a chance to, to be with you. With it's, it's, it's not on the level of judicial uh, evidence. But historically, it is. When you put all the evidence, written and physical, on one sequence, well, the conclusion is very clear. Which, which we are very excited to hear. Friends, we're going to do something different. We're going to take a few minutes. If you have questions to Eldad Kainan, please put it into your chat window, and Eldad graciously agreed to take a few questions. So if you do just have a, give me a few more seconds, Rabbi Yitzchak. No, continue. I, I just want to give them a chance to put the question. Continue, please. I will, yes. But before we close this, I just want to remind all the... Uh good people, that on my second, <clears throat> during my second uh, shiur in the Congress, I will deliver, I will show uh, the roots of this uh, belief, okay? Already in the first word in the Hebrew Bible, Bereshit. When there you... are, there are secrets in Bereshit which you even don't know. And I'm, I'm going to expose it. When you say secrets, without giving the secret, obviously, are you talking secret that related to messi the messianic faith? Uh, let's, yeah, let's say yes. There is much more, but yes. Absolutely incredible. And another uh, secret is in the term Brit Mila. What about the term? 
So Brit Mila circumcision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Incredible. There is another Absolutely amazing. I, I, I can't wait. I think everybody's at the edge of the seat. Guys, if you're watching it, you don't want to. It's exactly from this Thursday, three-hour special. I think everybody is excited. And uh, Eldad is also going to be teaching in the Congress itself. I think we all are very excited by it. Friends, if you have any question that you'd like to ask Eldad today, this is an opportunity to meet one of the keynote speakers in this Congress in Sheherit. I guess, you know, prophecy. So go ahead, guys, and put your questions in, and we'll try to get to uh, those questions. So if you want to ask questions, just put in the messengers, and we will get those. And yeah. that, talking about Sherry, the remnant, yeah. what do you believe? So you, 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 you're talking about, you know, five, six hundred years of Messianic Judaism existing in the land of Israel. Yeah which is very different than what I always said, that, you know, when the Council of Nasia took place, we're done. No, 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 well... Uh, that, that, that is something that I really want to grill you about. Okay. So, well, so uh, explain that to us, because I understood when the Council occurred, there was such a split, okay? No, no. No, I, I'm going to show the evidence. So there was still Messianic Judaism or a form of Messianic faith in the land into the 4th and 5th century? Yeah, and even 6th. Maybe even 6th. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And eventually after the 6th century, it's basically disappeared. That's, that's what took place? But not because somebody persecuted them, but part of them, I don't know what, how big was the part, became complete Christians, and the other just simply got back to complete Judaism. Incredible. There was, there was, there was no extermination. Absolutely amazing. So we have a couple of questions coming in. We want to take them live on the screen, okay? And, uh, okay. Let's, uh, let's go. I think, uh, uh, yeah, we have two, two questions. Keep on asking the questions. This is a very unique opportunity, but I'd like to remind you again that this conference is sponsored with Yeshiva Shuvu. If you are interested to find out about our Yeshiva, visiting visit us online again we are uh, available for you this is the website the yeshiva is operating both in spanish and also operating in english w no yiddish uh, spanish no, yiddish. no and english and italian no 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 yiddish yiddish oh yiddish yiddish <laughs> maybe soon, maybe, maybe Mashiach will return us to Yiddish, you know. Um, but we encourage you to go uh, be part of the yeshiva. And that is all part of this network that we are working with. And we endorse him and big time, big time. And if you're in Israel, book him. It will be a life-changing trip for you with, with Eldad. He's, he's doing those personal tours that I just love. I love the wealth of knowledge. Um, if you're if you're blessed from what you are hearing here today, I encourage you to sign up. But we are running out of time, friends, for El Dad lecture among dozen other lectures that all going to be groundbreaking. For hundred dollars, you get the entire package uh, as a thank you gift from us. Let's go and let's uh, let's uh, take a couple of questions, El Dad, if it is okay by you. We're going yeah. to go and let's uh, in a second. You will see it. I put it on the screen. You probably cannot see it on your phone, but I'll read it for you. It's come from Elitzu, from Alex, from Yeshiva Tshuvu. And he's asking, can you explain how much halacha was observed by Messianic Jews? And are you familiar, familiar with any of their communities in Italy and Spain? So two parts. Okay. So let's talk well, about the halacha. Because halacha, they were almost completely halachic Jews. Almost completely. On what area they were not, they were different? I know the answer. Burials. On the burial? Yeah. 
which is a huge thing in Judaism. Eldad, can you take a minute just to say why it's such a huge thing in Judaism? Well, you know, because I'm showing evidence of burials in my presentation, I prefer to, to keep it, you know, to, to keep okay. people wanting to see it. Okay. Eldad, you can keep it back. Don't let it go. Okay, okay. I will, I will show it in Bogota. It, it's quite complicated to do it this way without photos, blah, blah, blah. But an issue of, of Alakha, I mean, obviously, the, the, the loss of Tum'ah is, is a big thing. Nobody can yeah. deny that. But aside from the loss of Tum'ah, tum'a do you think that the rest of things that were Alakhically good kosher Jews? Yes, you know, one of the biggest things Jews do is going to Mikveh. And we have evidence that these Jews went to the mikveh. Incredible. Yeah, oh, we have evidence. Absolutely amazing. Amazing of that. And the question, the second question by Alex is... Yeah. No, no, no. I, I want to... I want to uh, Alizu, right? Charles Perez, I see the question. Yeah, you see it. Communities in Spain and Italy. Yeah. yeah. Do you want yes, to, I will to show to that? I have I have evidence. Yes, there were uh, Messianic Jew, Jews. Okay. There messianic Jewish communities in Italy and Spain. We have evidence. We do have evidence. Amazing, amazing. I'm sure Alex, you would want to spend some time with El Dad and okay. talk to him about this. Uh, okay, let's go to the next to the next question that's coming out. This is also from the Talmud of the Yeshiva, from Dan Naif. And Dan asked the question, you talk about first, second, third, fourth, fifth century. Yeah. Yeah. What caused them to Messianic Jews to disappear? What well, also caused them to disappear? I guess political pressure by the Byzantines made some of them complete the transformation to Christianity, while others I just got back to Judaism. But no persecution and no extinction. Got you, got you. Could it also be that they knew it's like one of those things that they had a Jewish ancestry and every generation less and less, we kind of see less and less Jewishness is, is being... Um, um, observed by them, Eldad? Uh, can you ask again, please? Eldad, Eldad, from what I've seen the evidence in Israel, the later stuff from like the 4th and 5th century, we see less and less Jewishness. They become less and less Jewish also. It's one of the... Uh, I'm not sure about it. I'm not sure about it. Hmm. Maybe they uh, allowed themselves, to, uh, for instance, to paint walls and you saw it, paint floors. But other Jews did as well from mid-second uh, century. So it's not being not, not Jewish. Okay. Okay. They just behave like any other Jew. Interesting. <clears throat> very, very interesting. That's, that's great questions. I think we, we're all excited about learning. So, Eldad, in conclusion, what... Do you want those who are coming to your lecture via online or or uh, or if physically? How did they prepare to the lecture? Keep open mind, open heart. What 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 is it that you want to tell the viewers open, today? Open mind, open heart, open ears, and a pen and paper. Very very good, very good, guys. We are excited about, about this. Eldad, I want to thank you all, uh, um, so much for joining us. Let me just say a couple of uh, closing words for everybody. So, uh, those who are watching us right now, I hope you are very, very blessed by what you are hearing. Um, it's going to be an exciting time. Uh, the yeshiva are going to meet on Thursday and Friday, pre Sherit conference, two days yeshiva. Uh, we will have with us anywhere, anybody from Eldat Kenan to Rabbi Gil to Pastor Mark Belts to uh, uh, Ted Pierce will be there too, and Joshua Aaron, and and just 
just about everybody will be there. And it's a prophetic time. God is preparing his remnant. So again, to remind you, there we put a link on your screen. And this is this uh, next five days, six days, it's a countdown to share it. So every day we're going to be live streaming a different person who is going to talk about share it. We're going to have with us here the next day or so, Pastor Mark Belt. If you don't want to miss uh, any of the streaming, go to our Vata Me page or Rabbi Yitzhak Shapira. <coughs> Subscribe to the page and make sure that you're not missing it, okay? So again, uh, this is opportunity. You can sign up today, but you have to do it quickly. This offer will not last long. Tonight also, just to let you know, we have a very big evening here, 7.30 p.m. Central Time, Rabbi Eric Tokiger doing Pninea Torah, the pearls of the Torah with us at the same time today at 4 o'clock Central, 5 o'clock Eastern in our Yeshiva Chivu Espanol page. We have a special shiur coming to you uh, uh, live uh, about Sherit with Oscar and Dudu Rubio, going to be exciting from Keilat Yover from Merkava Cafe live so a lot of good stuff is happening. I'm excited. And and you know what, Eldad? I, yeah. I'm hopeful so, so, so that God will use this uh, uh, research that you invested so many years doing, and not just in the university, uh, caves. How many years have you been going to those caves? For how many years? Oh, more than 20. More than 20 years. Yeah. I, I hope... The way by the way, the goat, the goat said hi. The, oh, <laughs> I saw you going to the goat. Congratulations. Some are braver than me. There is so much I will do for our, to win subscribers. That's crossed my line. <laughs> the goat, you know, but, but I am excited by this. So, Eldad, we are looking forward. We welcome you to the Shiva Shuvu, to, Thank to you. the Congress. We, we can't wait to have you there. And for the rest of you, Haverim, continue to be uh, blessed. I hope those broadcasts blessing you. And we're looking forward to having you with us. So we're looking Thank forward you. to this, as they say. Uh, Shalom velitraot, zai gezunt. We will see you in Bogota, or yeah. we will see you live on the live stream. Uh, go yeah. and run and register today. Litraot. Yeah.